So we're here in uh, Zach's lair. So we have his uh, Turbo E30 here. And then we have his 1000 horsepower 7M motor for his Supra under construction. He was nice enough to pull my E34 in last night. So um, yeah, we got a few things to do. So we have to tap a fuel sensor or a fuel pressure sensor into this rail. We have to add a IAT bung in the intercooler piping, block off the MAF since I won't be using that anymore. I, uh, we have to obviously put the standalone in here, put in a new wideband and boost solenoid. Uh, he's going to make a harness for me to route everything cleanly into here to get to the, uh, the standalone. Welding this bung for the fuel pressure sensor into my rail. Josh struggle here with the impact, all right? Yeah, well. Is it gonna fit? No, it does not fit, not so it looks like I gotta go back to the All right, go back oh. to the old cart. Yeah, it looks like I gotta go back to this. We'll get some of this, and get some of this welding in here. Oh yeah, get that in. Mount the GoPro. All right, we're gonna get real close here. Oh, no, mount the GoPro. Oh. <laughs> Damn, exactly what you're saying that. Come on, a lot of garbage here, man. <laughs> all right, so here we have the bung welded in, and the fuel pressure sensor in. So now she will, sit in here like this and the sensor goes right out the front right on top of my uh crankcase vent hose i mean if i knew something i'd say this is phenomenal. <laughs> yeah i mean this is solid man this phenomenal job I, I this is this is great we chopped out the map i don't we got a snake here he's sanding down my snake uh yeah so maps out if anyone wants to buy it and then uh putting the injectors back in Welding the new elbow on the intercooler piping. Rails in with the fuel pressure. Ooh, that was a good tax, man. Oh yeah. Apparently none of my vacuum lines were good enough, so <laughs> we're redoing all the vacuum lines and my block here. Is this? Math sensor. Yeah, Getting rid of the red lines that were apparently so ugly that Zach couldn't handle them. So uh, yeah, it's new vacuum. The IAT port is welded in, ready to go. Now this pipe can go back in. My nice intercooler pipe. We can run all the rest of your vacuum lines with this. What the hell is this? All righty. Why are you even wasting the zip ties, man? You got a whole pack, ow. Oh, oh sorry. Don't mind me. I don't want this. Don't, we don't need to cut these this either. This is what you need. These are good. Up to length. This is what you need. Jesus Christ. Jeff, what do you think about this? It's professional. Uh, I'm selling this build after that. There we go. Thoughts? Opinions? I mean, this is the best you can do. I like to hear. All right. Mr. Zach, what's your opinion on this? Mr. Good to go. Tell your thoughts on that. I also the think this is, this is good. So please, yeah, just thoughts, opinions in the comment section, please. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And. Uh, Oh, okay, so that's definitely going there. That's so we're trying to mount the uh, new ECU, and it actually, it literally fits there perfect. Welcome back again. Dude, that's really nice. And then this can kind of just... <laughs> we'll, we'll bolt this bracket to this piece right here. Well, I could just let it let We're going to bolt the bracket. So this is the uh, the standalone. This is the ECU. It fits perfectly in the stock E-Box. This is a standalone ECU. This is an adapter. <laughs> you know what I mean. I don't know you nothing. <laughs> if anyone wants this DME with a turbo tune, thousand dollars. Anyone want this garden hose? Fifty cents. <laughs> Fifty cents. For the garden hose. So close. Damn it. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Sick. Bosch the drill. We uh. We deleted the cruise control. Oh, bumper. So uh, this car will never have working cruise control again. Did a nice little wire tuck over there with the old harness that's no longer in use. We're just. Trying to figure out how to mount this uh, 
standalone in the E box, and uh, yeah. Then we got the new, we got the secondary wideband to go to the ECU in the map plug. So we're pinning out, or I should say, Zach is pinning out the, the harness for the wideband as I am doing these simpletons work of hooking up vacuum lines. <laughs> the masters at work here. Looks like a bunch of incoherent writing. This is well beyond me, I'll tell you that. Making the standalone harness now for the, uh, for the IAT. Under here, the fuel pressure, boost solenoid, and wideband. Zach's putting in the work to put them all into one clean looking harness. Because if it was me, it would just be, probably just be wires across the top of the engine. <laughs> So here we have the, the whole harness laid out. So this is where it goes into the E-box, into the standalone, comes down, goes to the boost solenoid, and it will wrap around the back of the firewall, under the, or around the, uh, whatever you would call the- Shock tower maybe? Yeah, the shock tower. And then it goes right here into the IAT, and then these go into the fuel pressure sensor. So that's the whole thing, so now it's gotta be loomed and then it'll lay in here very nicely. That, whatever all that correlates into the, the dedication pinning in the uh, last couple of things from the harness with all the uh, new sensors to go into the standalone itself. So, still out here grinding. We got the uh, harness hooked up. We got the IAT, fuel pressure, then tucked up all the way up here. That's the, uh, can't think of the word. <laughs> Goes through here. Up there, down along the uh, headlight harness to the boost solenoid, and then into the E box, which right there then will be connected into what Zach is pinning out right now. And then that'll go into the plug and play, into the ECU, and then we're done with the wiring. All right, here we are. So here's the standalone with the, uh, the two plug and plays with the wideband pinned in. And then this is the uh, connector that's pinned in for the IAT and the uh, other stuff that we just added. So now this will all hook up into the E-Box. And this is a legitimate car. 202 AM. Wow. <laughs> what a day. This man put in 13 hours on this freaking car today. I cannot thank him enough for this. Sounds like this where I feel like really bogus for filming watching you struggle. Oh, I missed most of the struggle. Yeah, that's what I was trying to do. We had to sit backwards and had to just re redo it and it's a lot of box and a lot of wires in a small space. It's very it's very stressful. We got everything tucked into the stock e-box, standalone, plug and play, stock harness, and then wide band and other gauges, all that. So here we have the oh, <laughs> whatever, they don't know that. Then here's the stock box. Let's see if she'll she'll go in and on. Oh man, you can't even tell there's a standalone on this bad boy. Stock box right here, covered. Do the screws go in? That doesn't matter much. Not too sure. Yeah, nor does it matter. So good to go, man. That is that is sick. We even got the uh, the fuel rail cover on and the um, the pressure sensor. Thank you. Sticks right off the side, looks perfectly stock almost. You can't even tell that this is a a boosted motor. Nah, that's stupid, but uh, this this just came out so like nice. I mean, really, you can't even tell the work that we did here because it all went back perfectly how it was, which is really impressive. It sucks that you really can't see the hard work that was put into like getting this. Huge shout out to this man, the man with the plan. This car would probably be in a scrapyard if it wasn't for him. I really cannot thank Zach enough for putting in the work on the E34. I had no idea how much work it would be wiring in a standalone. 
you know, I didn't realize all the intricate wiring and the fitting of everything and just overall, just everything that had to be done. I could have never done it. I appreciate it. We were literally, we've literally been out there since 1 p.m. It's now 2.30 in the morning. I'm on my way home. So uh, tomorrow, maybe we'll uh, download a startup map and try to start it and see if all the sensors are working and everything is up to standard prior to the dyno tune. But that's the least of our worries. It's done. We got all everything tucked and it looks so good. I'm, I'm super stoked about the whole thing. I can't wait to go to the dyno and see what kind of power she makes. And I can't wait to actually enjoy that E34. I wish I had this YouTube channel prior to this when I actually built that car. I started that build in May of uh, last year. And I mean, eight months of just grueling, like troubleshooting and couldn't figure anything out. And it was never running right and it was it was so annoying and there was just so many problems and stuff to get through and to see it in the stage it's in now is really cool but i wish you guys could have been there the whole struggle to now see the success i can't wait to i just can't wait for it to be done and get a lot of videos of it and cruise it and everything it's gonna be such a rad car thank you guys for watching have a good one i need to focus on driving because i am super tired take it easy